regulars who come back to see us after a while. And so we're just glad all of you are here and uh, we want you to make yourself at home. For any of our guests, we do have restrooms, one man, one's woman's, one man's room, one's woman's room down here. Uh, and then we have one each also back here in our fellowship hall. Uh, children's church is going on back there, but just sneak on in right around the corner and you'll be fine. All right. Uh, normally, if you've been here before on Harvest Day, we have a sumptuous meal that is ready as soon as we get done with all the, the COVID stuff and the restrictions and guidelines that our uh, doctors and health departments are giving us. We have foregone the meal today, uh, unfortunately, but uh, we do hope you enjoy yourself and the fellowship that we have here together. Uh, by way of announcements, if you join me in your bulletins, we do have just a, a couple of things uh, to let you guys know. Uh, the Operation Christmas Child Boxes, if you have a shoot box, that is due today, so uh, if you don't have it here this morning, try to get up with me and we'll get a time to run it back out here. But uh, those will be carried off very shortly to the next step of the distribution and preparing them so they can uh, be sent out to the children who otherwise wouldn't have anything for Christmas and otherwise probably don't know anything about Christmas and Jesus and why he uh, came and why we celebrate this holiday. So your gifts are very um, mission oriented and also very loving and so we want to i want to say thank you to everyone who brought a box and has put them already in the uh, fellowship hall we are still collecting uh, the small bottles of water the eight ounces and the individual packs of tissue from pw pw moore elementary school uh, you see there's a bunch on the table i want to take them off to the school this week but i uh, keep bringing them uh, because the kids will need them for a while. This is for kids who, uh, they can't go to water fountains like they used to, again, because of COVID stuff. And they can't use the communal blocks of Kleenex on the teacher's desk. They all need individual packs of uh, water and tissue. So we're giving these to the office for kids who have forgotten uh, or just ran out. So they have plenty, right? That's what that collection is for. Uh, and uh, I'll introduce them a bit more later, but we are excited to have Gene Ashton and uh, we're glad to see Ray and Marie, his grandparents, who have not been able to be with us for a long time, and are with us today. And uh, the, the lady that you don't know, one of them, is uh, Jean's fiance. So uh, make sure you congratulate him and give your condolences to her uh, before you leave today. <laughs> um, so yes, we are very excited for you too, and very happy for you guys, and looking forward to getting to know you better. All right. Any other announcements? Anything that needs to come before the church? Table is very lovely. We have great decorations inside and outside, and I do want to thank the folks who have put those together for us. All right, let's open up with a word of prayer. Holy Father God, I come before your throne of grace, thanking you for this day and this time we've been able to, uh, to celebrate together, to remember that even though this year has been so unusual and so difficult in many ways, that you have still provided. You have guided us through these times and you want to continue to guide us into the future. As long as we will submit to your will, your will will see us through and we will have peace beyond understanding and the, the wisdom to make the right decisions in our life. Lord God, we thank you for providing uh, the, the simple daily necessities that we need. Uh, through the, the farmers and the hard workers of the land, we have harvests. We can eat, we can eat freely. And most of us in here have never had to go without one of our three meals a day. And so Lord, we thank you for that great bounty. We recognize that makes us richer than many people in the world. And so we pray that you would provide for those people also and help us to do our part to give and to serve those in need and to love those around us. Holy Spirit, I ask you to be here in a way that we can, we can hear your voice speaking through your word and through Gene's sermon that you've given him. I pray, Lord, that you would touch our hearts and our minds. Open us to receive your word. Let us be transformed by it so we will be more and more like Jesus Christ, our Savior. We ask these things in his name so we can do his will and be his people. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is We Gather Together.
One more thing by way of uh, announcements that I uh, forgot. Uh, Circle of Friends, that's our ladies group meeting tonight at 5.30 in the fellowship hall. Uh, so please, ladies, remember to come back out tonight at 5.30 for your Circle of Friends meeting. Fellows, we're meeting next Sunday morning at uh, 9.30. Is that right? 9.30. Uh, if it's pretty outside by the picnic tables, if it's not in the fellowship hall next week. And I got a thank you letter. Uh, this transitions us into praise. Um, that some of what we can do can be good for others and that God has used what we have done. This is a thank you from Baptist Children's Homes in North Carolina. Dear Riverside Baptist Church, thank you for your special gift of love. Each boy and girl entrusted to the care of Baptist Children's Homes is blessed by your strong support of our mission. I appreciate your endeavors to make a difference in the hearts and lives of those we are privileged to serve each day. Autumn is the season where nature showcases its brilliant beauty. Watching our green landscape transform into jewels of copper, gold, orange, and red is nothing short of breathtaking. We are blessed with the opportunity to witness beautiful moments each day. A truly beautiful moment is seeing the smile on a child's face. To me, that sight is priceless. Just as breathtaking is witnessing your endeavors transform children's lives. Because of your commitment, Boys and girls receive healing. Because of your compassion, their broken hearts are made whole. Their changed lives are a beautiful testament to God's amazing love. And that priceless vision definitely puts a smile on my face. Thank you for lifting up the hearts of boys and girls through your generosity. Their lives will forever be changed because of your prayerful and thoughtful decision to give. With abundant gratitude, Michael C. Blackwell, President and CEO of Baptist Children's Home. I just wanted to share that with you, uh, that what we have been giving in the Baptist Children's Home Collection, that is a Thanksgiving offering. Uh, you see special envelopes for those by the table where you have the offering boxes, extra masks, etc. And on the table out here, uh, so a special Thanksgiving offering goes to them. So your contributions and your prayers do help change the life of little ones who uh, are in need, who need safety and security, who need uh, those three meals a day that we just gave thanks to God that we have, that they haven't always known. So thank you for giving, and please pray about continued giving. Uh, by way of prayer request, uh, I would like to update everybody on Miss Reedy. She is back home. She is, um, talked to her Friday, feeling, she was feeling a week Friday, a little, uh, just drug down, but she had just moved back from nursing home back home, and that's a big ordeal. And so that's very natural, um, nothing sickness-wise. She says her therapy is going really well. And um, she is still in the process of looking. Uh, she's looking to find two people to come and help her around the house. Uh, one for kind of morning, getting up early chores, and then later afternoon, evening, help her uh, finish up dinner and dishes and, and get ready for bed and that sort of thing. She's found one. I think she's in process of interviewing for the second. Last I heard, Linda, you got more? She actually has her weekday ladies, okay. one in the morning, one in the evening, but she does not have weekend help tied down yet. They're still pursuing that. That okay. was as of this morning when I talked with her. Okay, great. So making progress. Got the weekday ladies, both morning and afternoon, but still be in prayer she finds the right weekend person. Uh, more than just coming and sitting with her, she actually needs you know, help around the house and things like that. So uh, they're still interviewing. So be in prayer to get the right ladies, and uh, there'll be a blessing to Miss Reedy, and you know she will be to them. Uh, so just be in prayer for uh, that person. Uh, any other updates or additions to our prayer list or praise reports? Unspoken. Unspoken. Oh, um. Amanda's Aunt Kathy, if you're on the email chain, I sent that out that she had, uh, she has pneumonia. Uh, she's doing better. She got moved to the hospital in Wilmington, one of the closest big hospitals. Uh, that'd be the equivalent of us going up to the Chesapeake or Norfolk uh, for where they live. Uh, she's in the hospital in Wilmington uh, in a part of the hospital where she can't have any visitors. So uh, they're just getting you know, phone calls and messages, but she is feeling better and doing better. So she's starting an improvement. Uh, thank you for your prayers, and please keep praying for uh, Amanda's Aunt Kathy. Anybody else? David Willie is doing better. Thank you for the prayers. Good, good. yes. Thank you for praying for David. Anybody else? Bauer 
Bauer? Let these up to the Lord. Holy Father God, we come before you again, uh, only able to come before your throne of grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for making the way, the only way, for us to come into God's presence. Uh, you made that way yourself because you are the way, the truth, and the life. And Lord, as the, the power of life in this world, as the light that pierces the darkness, we pray that you would uh, be in the lives of these that we've mentioned and the unspoken that need to remain private, Lord, in a way that is powerful and is touching, a way that strengthens them and brings them to you. We pray, Lord Jesus, that your will will be done. And if we may have any way of swaying that will, as sometimes uh, your saints do, we ask you, Lord, to work healing, to bring peace beyond understanding, to ease the power and the, of grief and to restore a body's weakness. We thank you, Lord, for Miss Reby, that she's back home, that she is uh, able to still to live uh, at her home for a while, and we pray, Lord, that you would just bring the right people into her life to help her. We pray, Lord, that they would be a blessing to her, and she would be a blessing to them. I thank you, Lord, that Aunt Kathy is doing better, and I pray that you continue to help her to heal, and we pray, Lord, for the Bowers family, that you would touch them in their situation. I thank you, Lord, for David, that he is doing better. We thank you, Lord, for the great bounty that we always get to enjoy, the, the air we breathe, the, the easy access to clean water and food. Lord Jesus, we are so blessed by you, and we so often take it for granted. And so, Lord, we want to lift up to you now our praise and our thanks. As we enter this month where we celebrate Thanksgiving, this special time we set aside to celebrate the harvest season, we want to give you thanks because all good gifts have come from you. We can do nothing in ourselves, but only through your power, only through the very life that is a gift from you, can we do anything. And so we thank you, and we want to give to you the fruit of our labor, the, the lordship of our heart and our minds. And we ask you to conform us to your will. In the name of Jesus, amen. And our next hymn, hopefully will be uh, called My Tribute.
Most of you here, you already know Gene Ashton, uh, Jr., technically. Uh, but uh, it has been my pleasure over the last two years, three, two and a half years, really, uh, to get to know Gene and to just see him grow in the Lord. Uh, first thing I think he ever said to me after high was, you know, I love Jesus, but I don't like the church. And so that started a big old conversation that went on to lunch at Volcano, lunches at Chick-fil-A, and here and there, and meeting and find out, well, what, what, what has organized religion done to you? It's like, well, no, like any of the people. It's like, and he finally came down to the point of really understanding the gospel message and the Holy Spirit opened him up to it. And he said, you know, I've learned this, but I didn't really understand it uh, until very recently. And then God got a hold of his heart. And God has changed him in ways that have led him into the ministry. And now he's pouring out his life to love the church, the local church, so he can minister to people uh, like us in a local church setting. And it's been my pleasure to watch him grow in the Lord, to mature. Uh, and I know he's going to continue to do that. And I uh, just I can't wait to hear the message he has for us today. The Lord has put on his heart. Uh, when I called him a couple of weeks ago to say, hey, Gene, you want to preach at Harvest Day? He's like, I've always wanted to be able to say something at Harvest Day. And he just started going about what he might say and ideas for sermons. And it's like the Lord was just pouring joy into him to speak out to us uh, on this special day. So I want to introduce my brother and my friend, uh, Mr. Gene Ashton. morning. So, growing up at Riverside Baptist Church, Harvest Day was always special. It was just a special day. Being a big guy that loves food made it even more special. The people that were here, my church family from the time I was a little kid growing up, one Sunday you didn't want to miss was Harvest Day. And you could tell, you could see church attendance kind of a little bit light, but when this day hit, this place was packed. And I loved it. And one day, I think just like when Jay just said, that I got the call to preach Harvest Day. And it was like, a lot of people call this homecoming. Well, this is coming home. This is me being able to come home and preach at my home church, a church that I love dearly. And it's quite the honor. And I'm very, very thankful to be able to preach here on Harvest Day. It's such a special day. So I'm going to open up and loop chapter 14 verse starting at verse 15 and I want to set the scene as you guys look it's Luke chapter 14 I'm starting at verse 15 the great banquet so I want to open the scene so Jesus is at a prominent Pharisee's house verse 1 says one Sabbath when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee he was being carefully watched and we know these Pharisees they're high and mighty. They look great on the outside. They, they had great knowledge. They were very smart from the time they were small. They had the whole entire Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, memorized. They knew Scripture. But what was different is they didn't have it in their heart. Their heart was dirty. So when Jesus came along and he fulfilled these messianic prophecies, and it was there, and it was written in Scripture. The first thing they did was they kept an eye on it, just like they did John the Baptist. And we know what John the Baptist called. They called them vipers. They called them snakes. Because they looked good, they knew Scripture, their heart was messed up. So Jesus, I can only imagine, have you guys ever been at a table with somebody and they command the room? They command that table. Like when they start storytelling or they start talking, those people have that table. You're listening to them. You're following and listening and their storytelling is there. And I'm sure this is exactly, exactly what was going on with Jesus. 
He was sitting at this table with Pharisees. And we know from the time Jesus was a little boy. We knew he knew scripture. Because he was sitting there and he was at a young age with Pharisees. And they knew something was different about this guy. I don't imagine a 33-year-old man speaking and knowing Scripture and telling parables and commanding that table. Let us pray before we get into Scripture. Lord God, we thank you for letting your saints come together today to congregate. Lord God, though we might leave physically empty stomachs, we pray that spirit-wise we leave full spiritually lethal. Lord God, I thank you for delivering us safe here to Riverside Baptist. Lord God, be with us. Open our minds, hearts, and souls that we take your word in. And we thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So, Luke chapter 14, verse 15. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready. So let's pause right there. So, invitations to banquets back then, this was a big thing. You'd have the rich people, the prominent people in the area, they'd have banquets. And what they would do is they'd send messengers out. And they'd say, hey, such and such is having a banquet. And they'd let them know. But they wouldn't let them know the date. And then, once the banquet was ready, and the party was ready, they would send the messengers back out. And they would say, hey, the banquet's ready. Be here. Let's go. Let's go eat. Let's go, let's go be together in fellowship. So that's a little bit of how messages happened back then. Hopefully you can draw the lines, the symbolism that's already started in here. We're going to pick up at verse 18. But they, all alike, began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Here comes the excuses, guys. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, What you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. There is so much symbolism in this parable. You have Old Testament symbolism, where the Old Testament prophets, where they would spread the message that Israel was to be the shining light to all the other nations. And they failed at that goal. That's why Jesus had to come. That was already in plan. God knew that Israel was going to fail. <clears throat> but when we look at the allegory, this parable, we see that the master of this house is God. The invitation that went out first was Israel. They had their excuses. They had their blunders, and they failed. There was a second invitation sent out. That invitation came with Jesus. That invitation, that invitation came that the kingdom of God is here. I would like to make an educated evaluation and say most of the people at this gathering, at this dinner, were Jewish. Because they looked down upon the Gentiles at this time. They looked at the Gentiles as dogs. That they were unclean. So... But we can take this parable and we can use this parable today because actually we fit in. We were the outcasts that Jesus spoke about. We were not in that fold at this time. But through Christ's death on the cross, we were grafted in with Israel. 
It is evident today that we have so many people that make excuses. So many people that minimize the work that was done on the cross of Calvary. So many people that look at the cross that they say, you know what, that Jesus thing is not for me. That Jesus thing is just, man, don't want it. Don't care about it. Don't need it. And they make these lame excuses. I have oxen to tend to. I just got married. You know what? I want to do what I'm doing now. And you know what? I'll get to that Jesus thing later on. The thing is, some people don't get that later on. Some people don't make it to that later on. Some people don't accept that invite. They mark it off as, I'll do that later. You know what? That Jesus thing, that's, that's some good stories. That's some good things we can take into account and we can just, you know what? That's great. But, we as believers, when I put together a sermon, I want to be able to speak to the believers, to my brothers and sisters. But I also want to be able to speak to the ones that aren't saved. The ones that that invitation is still pending. Because that invitation is there. That invitation is there for everybody. But I want to get into that invitation that we have already accepted. That that great banquet that we look forward to someday. And I'm, if you guys want to turn with me, I'm, going to, I'm in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Revelation 21, 1 through 4. One thing I love about being a preacher, studying the Word, getting into the Word daily, is being able to connect dots and see there's no contradiction in Scripture. Through the Old Testament, through the New Testament, through Jesus' parables, you can connect the dots. And it all makes sense. It all comes full circle. So starting at verse 1 in chapter 21 of Revelation, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. So I want to share with those that are visiting my little church. I want to share with you what Harvest Day is like. When we look at this great banquet, we got to kind of put it together. And though we have revelation through Scripture, we have to put it together because we're human. To put it together and think about what that great banquet might be like someday. There are people in this church that are here right now that have had major impacts on my life. Major impacts from the Sunday school teachers to the VBS ladies to preachers that are here now, preachers that, have, that were here, and to so many people that I love that I know are like my family. But there's ones that's passed on. Every Sunday that Mr. Lonnie Hill would pray, it would give you goosebumps. That man could pray. That man, whether you're a believer or not, he would give you goosebumps. I can't wait to have dinner someday up in heaven and Mr. Lonnie, he'll pray again. And I get to hear his voice. And as a believer now, that, that means so much. Miss Peggy Stebach, her food, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, anybody, that was here at that time, know that lady could cook in the sweetest way. But I want to tell you about one man. God, I love this guy. Big old mountain of a man. He sat there, and I mean, he would he dwarfed me. And he still, probably still dwarfs me. But what I would do is I'd sit there, and I'd, I'd get a big plate, but I'd always make sure I was in line with him. 
So that way, if somebody was like, man, that boy's grabbing a lot of food, you'd be like, I think, look, he's got some too. That's Mr. Dennis Berger. <laughs> I would sit there and I'd keep an eye when Dennis Berger would finish his food. As soon as he finished his food and make his way for his second plate, I followed behind him because I didn't want to be alone getting a second plate. So I miss those folks. I miss those folks that put so many years of service into this church that were loving people. Someday, us believers, I'm not sure if we eat in heaven. I hope we do. And I hope not a single carb counts. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I can't wait to sit down with my church family and those that have gone to sleep and those that have been called up. When Christ breaks those clouds and we take our final breath that we get to sit at that table together as saints. And we're all looking for that day that Jesus calls us home. We don't need to ex expediate that process or anything like that. But we're looking forward to that day. We're looking forward to the day God calls us home. What that gives us is peace. When you think about Paul and Barb, they're going to love us. But if we're for him, they're going to hate us. Same world, guys. That's Jesus' words. If we live for the world, I'll say it one more time. We live for the world, and we're like, okay, I'm worldly. I want to fit in. I don't, I don't want to face the persecution, but you know what? I'm going to hide my Jesus. You belong to the world. We as believers belong to Him. We were bought with a price. That price was the shed blood on the cross of Calvary. When we're bought at that price, the Apostle Paul called himself a servant of Jesus. We should all be servants of Jesus. We should all be the shining light in this world. Because Lord help us, there's a lot of folks that need it. And it's very evident. The work, there's a lot of work to be done. The workers are few. What message do we bring to these people. When we bring the invites out, what message are we bringing? The message we have to bring is simple. That Jesus, God in the flesh, died on the cross and He rose three days later. He defeated death. His blood covers our sins. This invite is open to everybody. It's not just a particular group of people. It's not just this person or that person. It is open to every single person. That invite should be, which when, you hit your, when your feet hit the floor in the morning, that invite has to go out. People should be able to see Christ in you. There's going to come a time that those doors to the banquet are going to close. There's going to come a time where the invite is no longer pending. That invite is canceled. There is no more entrance. That real judgment will happen. And I know Harvest Day is a celebratory time. But I'm going to tell you folks something, one thing right now. If when that invite cancels, that would be the most joyous time we've ever had. That when our Savior calls us home, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, that there is no more heartache, there is no more pain. He's going to wipe away every single tear. It might sound dark and gloomy because that cancel is going to happen to so many people. So many invites are going to be canceled. That we're going to be called up with Christ. And when that happens, what a glorious day it'll be. For the ones that that invite is still pending, for the ones that say, hey, you know what? I got some oxen. Well, maybe that sounds like, hey, you know what? I got some housework to do. 
Maybe that invite sounds like my pillow is a little more comfortable on Sunday morning. Maybe that invite is, or that excuse is fill in the blank of what that excuse might be. The world ain't changed and neither have the excuses. But we still have the invite. That if you don't know Christ, then that invite is open. That invitation is open. There's a seat at the table for you. It's nothing you do. Doesn't matter how many old ladies you help across the street. It doesn't matter about how many years of service you put into the church. That ain't going to get you into heaven. What's going to get you into heaven is God's grace. What's going to get you into heaven is that blood that was poured out on Calvary. That you believe in your heart that Christ died on the cross and rose three days later. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And it is time to repent from your ways. It is time to take it serious and know that invite is open. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys as my church family. I love Harvest Day for many reasons that we can come together. And someday there's going to be a great harvest and there's going to be a great banquet. And if we as seed spreaders going through the land spreading seeds of the gospel, sharing the gospel with so many, someday that harvest is going to come in. And that great farmer, the great physician, the great harvester, Jesus himself is going to take us home. And what a glorious day to be. Let us pray. Lord God, <clears throat> we come before you humbly. Lord God, we are so, so thankful that we're no longer under the law. Our works don't save us. That we only have your blood to save us. We only have one thing to keep our eyes focused on throughout this world, Lord. This cruel world that we're just passing through. That we have you, Jesus. In turmoil, we have you, Jesus. In joyous times, we still have you, Jesus. And we're so thankful for you. We're so thankful you came to earth. Lord God, we praise you. We thank you. In your precious Son's name we pray. Amen. You've heard the invitation pretty clearly from the Lord and repeated by one of His messengers. The invitation is that we come and join our great, glorious God in His in His fellowship, in His banquet. And He has invited the whole world to come. If you have not accepted that invitation yet, as Gene said, now is the time. As the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. Don't make any excuses. Don't put it off. I'm going to have one more hymn. If you need to come and publicly accept that invitation, I'll be ready for you right down here at the altar. I'll show you in the Bible how you can be part of God's family join that that church body that will be with him forever. Maybe you want to come and simply pray. You have some some need. You can share it with me. We'll pray together. Or you just kneel here and pray. Maybe you want to pray for someone you know who is still making excuses and has not accepted the Lord's invitation yet. Whatever your need, while the choir sings, Jesus, the very thought of thee, please come.